and as they pay attention, the lights are green, their brain's in the right state, they get more points. If they daydream or fidget or overfocus, it turns red and it just freezes, just like you hit pause in your DVD player. So a lot of people, since there are other groups doing the neurofeedback, a lot of people have asked, you know, what's the difference between you and this center and this center? So I like to make slides. They made a slide out of this. Um, we've been doing this since 1982. Uh, we've done a lot of research. The one that's coming out this month will be our, uh, my 10th research study. It's very important to do research, but there are places that do research that kind of don't really do research and they charge you money to be in a study. Do you ever hear them advertise these medication studies on the radio and TV? They pay you to be in a study. Or the study should be free. You shouldn't have to pay to be in a study because if you pay, you're going to influence the results because you're going to kind of expect to get, you know, results. We have a neurologist look at the EEG on every patient. The first five autistic patients I saw 10 years ago, two of them had an, a seizure disorder. One of them is one who took medication and didn't actually have aut autism. The other one had autism with a seizure disorder. It ended up not to be that common, but it's very important. We even do it for ADD, like the boy in the doctor show, he had a pattern. We do the most frequent monitoring. Every 10 sessions, we retest people because we have to alter these protocols. We need to change them and fine tune them depending on how, how someone does. We only do it individualized and everyone's pattern is different based on their brain. In spite of that, um, our fees are pretty much in the ballpark with everyone else, but the most important part is this part at the bottom. We don't only do neurofeedback. I mean, there's some people who only do one treatment and they do it for everything or everybody. So we have psychiatrists that can do medication if we need to. Um, we do social skills groups over the summer and other things and parenting. Uh, so we try to figure out, we come up with a treatment plan. Everyone's treatment plan is different, even though we prefer to do neurofeedback. If we get an adolescent who's suicidal, they can't do neurofeedback. They're going to need to be in some sort of counseling and therapy. They may need medication temporarily. I mean, so everyone's case is different. If we have a child and the parents want them to do neurofeedback and they think they're going to get divorced and one of them might move back east, I'm not going to start a neurofeedback treatment that may take a couple months to do, not knowing if they can finish it. So it's really individualized. One of the things I'm going to announce here, and we just start doing this recently, there's a new type of neurofeedback that came out last year that we start doing called Smart Mind. And this is a new type of neurofeedback for not only ADD, but people who have ADD and learning disabilities that have, may have autism or brain injuries. What it does, it combines a learning program called Captain's Log and neurofeedback in the same program. And some of you are familiar with a lot of computerized learning programs. It works on processing speed, auditory visual learning, math, patience, memory but it only teaches you these learning skills and cognitive skills when your brain is in the right state. So let's say you're learning, you're working on auditory, visual processing, or math, and you start daydreaming. The Smart Mind Neurofeedback Program stops the learning program and puts you into the neurofeedback program. And then you have to get your brain calm and focused again, and then you can do the learning program again. Or if you're doing the learning program and you overfocus, it stops the learning program and puts you back into the uh, neurofeedback program so you only learn when your brain's in the right state. And this is something I've been wanting to do for years. I've helped develop some of the software because so many students that have learning problems with attention problems do all these really good learning techniques or special ed at school and they just don't do that well. They, they, they get some results but they don't do as well and it's because they can't pay attention and they're not kind of remembering and integrating it. So this is the first program that combines both. And I've worked with Dr. Sanford, who's the director, and developed some of the software. We're still working on some new programs now, but it's been phenomenal. We've had children and an adult now that have had years and years of gains in like 10 sessions of neurofeedback. Phenomenal uh, so far. So we're really excited about the Smart Mind program. Uh, this is some of the screens where there might be a game where they're kind of racing and they have to keep one brainwave above and below, but they're getting stars and points and they earn little computer money as they do well. So it's this really integrated system. 
and their brain waves are being monitored and they're trying to make this star bigger and get points. So there's all these kind of two different systems of learning and a neurofeedback in one. That's called smart mind. And, um, and what they found so far, they did, they did a study for adults that had ADHD and brain injuries and they found out when they used this program, both auditory and visual attention improved um, with these adults. And now we're doing you and doing this with children. So we're very excited about that. I'm going to finish up by showing you what happens to the brain. Because remember what I said, our goals aren't just short term, our goals are long term to resolve the problems in the brain long term without side effects. The really exciting thing about neurofeedback and the brain maps is we can measure what happens in the brain. We can see the symptoms improve, but we can see the brain improve. So this is an adolescent with ADD, and these are all those theta-beta ratios that shows that they're daydreaming too much, five, four, almost six times as high. After the neurofeedback, they were all below the 2.89, 1.8, 1.4, 1.0. So we can measure with the statistics that the brain was daydreaming less and focusing better. This looked like somebody that didn't have ADD anymore. And when I actually looked at the brain waves, we're trying to get rid of the red, the top rows, the daydreaming. And this is somebody that had that overfocused type, a different type. And this is the overfocused, the red here. After the neurofeedback, almost all the red was gone. Very kind of nice to see a physical change as he was able to focus and not get stuck on things. Now, when we work with autism and Asperger's and we started doing this, our first question is, how can we get these kids to do the test? And we actually figured out some really good ways to get the kids to do the brain map. And we're able to get 98% of our autistic students through the brain map. And then the question was, okay, now that we know what's going on in the brain, how are we going to get the autistic and Asperger students to do the neurofeedback? How are they going to come in for all these sessions? Because we realized they had so many more abnormal patterns, it was going to take more sessions. What we found out is even though at the beginning there were more challenges working with students with autistic spectrum disorder, as we go through the neurofeedback, they were easier to work with than the ADHD and ADD students. Anybody want to guess why? Is it common? Sometimes. Do you they don't, routine? they like routine, they don't get bored. The students with ADD start well, but after a while they get bored and we have to use all these rewards and points and movie passes and allowance to kind of get them to finish up. The students with autism and Asperger's, they're kind of a little hard to begin with, but once we get them a r routine, and they're coming in the same day and usually with the same therapist. They settle into this routine and they do great. As a matter of fact, they never want to stop. And they want to play the same game on the same system every time. So we have to reinforce them to try different games and not overfocus or try different display. The results have been more gradual but even more significant than ADD. And this has been so exciting to me because of the lack of medications for autism and Asperger's. We've seen improvements with speech. A lot of kids have started to talk that were nonverbal. Social skills, their behavior has improved. Their anxiety has improved. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. So this is one of my favorite examples. This was an adolescent we worked with about five years ago. And he had a lot of red in the delta. And he had this beta, which was the overfocus pattern. He would, um, let's see if I can take a chair and show this to you. When I first met with him, he had a lot of the classic autistic symptoms. He would just like sit in a chair, rock, he wouldn't even look at me. How much longer? Go now. And he'd get up and he'd walk away after about 30 seconds. That's the only interaction I could have with him. After about 20 sessions, uh, I see him in our, our hall that you saw in that doctor's video, and I see him, hi, Dr. London, smiling. He's looking at me and he's waving. Big difference in what I saw beginning. After 40 sessions, when his mom brought him in, she goes, you're not going to believe what happened. He's talking, he's communicating. I had about a half an hour conversation with him. And he's giving me eye contact. And he says, thank you, Dr. Linden, for the neurofeedback. It's really helped me. And I'm in some regular classes. And I'm getting A's and B's. So he's 15 now. And he says, and I discovered something new. I discovered something I really like. So he's 15 years old. What do you think he discovered? I discovered there's girls, and I like girls, and I want to get married, and I want to marry Rebecca, and that was his neurofeedback therapist, and the mom's, 
Mom's kind of tur you know, tearing up and she says, thanks a lot. I never thought I'd have to deal with this. So now we have to